Anytime you use the word sacred, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And uh, to me, it's like from the heart. In economics, a sacred economy is sort of defined as a resource-based economy. It's essentially different forms of economics that allow the representation of different kinds of wealth other than just financial profit. Project 33 and a starship in every garage is about basically empowering people to actualize their highest self and to honor the people that you encounter as being powerful creators, each in their own right. Every garage should be outfitted with abundance. You know, everyone should have what they need in order to like pursue their dreams and propel themselves to the stars and the economic systems that are most popular now really make it hard to pursue those goals because we're essentially taught that you have to take what you need from someone else because there isn't enough to go around. And, uh, you know, there's just that basic change that needs to happen where people understand that there is enough to go around and we don't need a corporate system to take care of us. We have a starship in every garage. I first became aware of Marcel Braun through my work with Marble Slinger on his film, Degenerate Art, The Art and Culture of Glass Pipes. And Marcel's a guy who's had a major impact on not only the artistic development of the glass pipe movement, but also in the development of new processes and technologies that have really changed the game in terms of the way that borosilicate glass is worked. His reputation really lies in the subculture of glass pipe making. He was a pivotal person in bridging the function to an art and taking huge leaps and chances with his work to try to like make concept an important part of his functional pipe and really like inspired a whole generation of people to, to like, you know, to progress to where they are today. Marcel is a dedicated person who wants to be at the forefront of working, uh, shaping, and melting borosilicate glass. He sees all sorts of opportunities to take the borosilic, the working characteristics of borosilicate glass, and apply it to to uh, a host of uh, new ideas. So basically, one day Marcel calls me up. I haven't heard from him since you know, we premiered Degenerate Art, and he says, hey, Collins, I need your help, man. I've got this new project I've been working on that's developing a community currency out of Boro coins, Milli coins, and we're gonna challenge the banking industry. And you know, one thing I know for sure is that no matter what, whatever Marcel's working on, it's gonna be interesting. So I basically told him, hey man, like, 
why don't I come out there and, you know, hear what you have to say. idea of a centralized currency being necessary is really only a good thought for the people in the banking industry because that allows them to control and have this idea of interest. And uh, this has been going on for so long, that's how we end up with this massive imbalance with 99% of the resources in the control of the 1%. That's kind of neat. <laughs> I think people might want these. By taking back control of our currency, just by agreeing to trade in a certain way, it's really just going back to the old ways of exchange before this centralized currency corruption that we're faced with now. Boom. First coin. It's essentially the idea of showing that an alternative is possible, to like live a bit of an alternative lifestyle outside of the system, and just so people can think about it, like, hey, you know what, it is, it would be possible to step outside. We're not taking it down that traditional avenue, we're creating something that is kind of an organized bartering system where we're using a collective kind of acceptance of this being a bartering coin for this mini economy. This no offense, the... you're not gonna convince anybody else of this right. at first, but yourself. You're gonna have to lead by example with this one. Right. Because you're going off on such a, a limb, shall we say. That's one of the things that intrigued me to this in the beginning is that you threw out a proposal that seems impossible. I mean, let's be real honest with it. This okay. is like you're talking about trying to remove yourself from our economy. Okay, yeah. An alternative. Is possible. That pretty much sums it up. Sacred economics has been a notion articulated in many forms for, for probably hundreds or thousands of years. I mean, even in the Bible, uh, in Leviticus, they had the Jubilee. Every 50 years, all wealth goes back into the common pool. Start over again. The Kwakiutl Indians of the Northwest they had the potlatch where the wealthiest people had no respect until they gave it all away, had a big party lasting a couple weeks, and they left naked in their huts. And then they were treated with enormous respect. And uh, that systematic process by which wealth was redistributed for sacred purposes is ancient. Humans have always competed and they have always cooperated. When it gets too competitive and so extreme that so many people are crushed underfoot, uh, then there's great anger in the land. We came to Seattle committed to the cause of social justice to our people and our planet. Because in this global economy, we are bound together. So at such a time, there is a need for solutions which enable us easily to meet our basic needs. And through these solutions, all of us have easier and happier lives. There is a need, particularly in the United States at this time, for this kind of solution-oriented politics and economics. If you have money, you can buy anything. The 
the goal of this project is to create a trade medium that we can use within our community so that all of the benefit is recirculated into our community. To actually sit and make the money that our friends and peers use to facilitate their transactions and that we use to phase out of an exchange-based economy altogether and move towards a gratitude and abundance-based economy. If the community accepts these tokens, we're basically just agreeing that we all trust each other more than we trust the government. You know, it's so apparent, like no one really has faith in the monetary system. We just don't have much of an alternative. So the hope with, with this project and with this documentary is to show that actually we do have an alternative and it's trusting that your neighbor is a powerful creator and also wants the whole block to flourish like you do. We have a billion dollar industry to work with. As long as we don't control that fire hose of economics, they're controlling it. We gather that control and we can focus it. We're not going for financial success. We're going for community success. When this project came up, you know, it was obviously trying to understand what Marcel's real vision of it was, and then obviously offering some support from my end of just my experience dealing with this sort of secondary currency and how it actually really works. Now trading in Ben Franklin's for Norman Rockwell's. Economics correspondent Paul Salmon visits one New England county that prints its own money. As the Cyprus fiasco focuses attention once again on the faltering euro, a vast array of complementary currencies are already helping people facilitate transactions without the central bank administered fiat money. I was involved in a secondary currency in Bellingham, Washington at one point in time where this was used in town for a while, right? But they had like the backbone already set up, you know, where it was like, I'm going to the local Whole food store, I'm gonna cash in my coin, I'm gonna go down to the farmer's market, cash in my coin, sort of let it go full circle so that at some point that coin hopefully comes back to you personally and then you're able to sort of start it again. So I think the only thing that, you know, caught me sort of off guard when Marcel had brought up this idea of the coins and, you know, this sort of sacred currency or whatever he wanted to call it was, you know, that was my first thing to him, was like, where's the backbone? If I walked into like the coffee shop right now with one of those coins, it would be the same thing as me walking with any random object and just trying to like barter with them for something where I feel like they would just look at me like I was crazy. If you're gonna do stuff like economics and like currency, like there has to be an idea of like how many exist, how many are going to exist. There has to be some kind of record keeping and keeping track of like, or else you're really just like kind of like a hippie dreaming. You know what I mean? Which is fine, but I think you just have to call a spade a spade. You know, where's the organization of how this actually is gonna feed back, right? Because usually it looks sort of shady in a way at the beginning because who's the one that's taking the first initial financial green dollar? But I think that's why some people were turned off on it because it's very confusing. And a lot of people don't even know that in America there are second forms of currency. Uh, in circulation all the time in big cities. So you've probably got three sides of the story. Some people are going, this is fucking bullshit. I think it's the stupidest thing in the world. You're gonna have some people are going, huh, well, how do I really buy a coin to trade to this or whatever? And then you've got people that are like, oh, this is super cool. And let's, you know, let's work together to make it happen.
I enjoy like the whole hands-on process to to roasting your own coffee. Right. Roasting coffee is kind of like blowing glass. There's uh, something new to learn every time you do it. You know. You know, I've been around blowing glass for about 16 years, and this is the one community that I've ever been a part of where if you need something, the community's there for you. The whole idea behind this project is uh, it's shedding light on, on the monetary system. And I think for me, the bigger part of this whole project is really coming together, sharing what we do, and the fact that we can go a lot further together than we can on our own. There's so much risk involved in doing this. I mean, these projects don't happen for free. So, you know, when somebody makes that phone call and says, hey, you're invited, do you want to come do this? The community kind of steps up and says, yeah, you know, you roll the dice and we'll be there to support you. And, you know, I mean, that's beautiful. There's, there's nothing more beautiful that I can think of than coming over and giving of yourself and, and spending some time to be a part of something like this. So that's why I'm here. <laughs>2016, the year we build a bigger table. <laughs> we got this uh, color from North Star. We got the whole rainbow right here. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. When I first came to Portland, like it was the first time I really started seeing like crazy artistic stuff. And then I start going to these flame offs in, at the Eugene Glass School. Marcel Braun's always this headline artist who comes through. They have pictures of him, full suits of like Kevlar and reflective tin, and like it's like bigger than life and shit. So I think that's probably the first celebrity artist I ever really like. Kind of was like, damn, like what's this guy doing? Motherfucker's just bare handing glass into the furnace. That's not. <laughs> was just oh, no, dude. Dude. <laughs> Definitely made a lot of good friendships and uh, connections down there. Uh, Boro Art Supply, Mason and I met there. You know, we wouldn't have our business if it weren't for the project getting pulled together. And ever since, it's just been, it's been uh, nothing but great experiences. We're operating with the core group of people here that are here because they want to see a positive change. And you know, most of the people that are here don't have an idea that they're gonna like get rich or have some kind of like immediate financial success from participating. They're here because they're in touch with the project and they wanna they wanna give it a shot. So it's it's really awesome. We're just like prepping it all up, getting the kinks worked out. I feel like we're gonna be in a really good position as people start rolling in in the next couple of days. Sometimes you just you have to be out there and really try new things and different things. And you know, Marcel has a vision of what he's doing, and he's really devoted to it, and he believes in it. And sometimes, we're, you know, you just want to support an artist, and you know, it's like, okay, you know, yeah, let's see what you do with it, and you know, I'll I'll help you out.
the thing that stands out immediately to a lot of glass blowers would be uh, Draco and doing glory hole work uh, with borosilicate as your medium instead of soft glass. And 99% uh, of glass blowers don't have any access to gain knowledge through that form of the medium. I just like watching Marcel just spread all his knowledge. Like he's got so many young, talented people just coming through the Starship. He, he shares everything he knows. Definitely admire that in him. You know, as they grow and their facility becomes grander and grander, I, I think it's an awesome place for everybody to get together and kind of have that community. Bob, how does it feel to see this many torches and this many guys working all in one place, knowing where it all started? <laughs> it's sure a long ways from just a national hand torch, yeah. It's just amazing working with all these people. And the, the vibe here, knowing what we're creating and knowing why we're here is just a so much more elevated level of consciousness than when you go to work and you're just talking numbers of dollar bills all day long. Marcel invited me to come out here and play. He wanted me to um, do as much innovation with furnace technology as we can work out together during the time that the project's going on. So what we got here is an old pottery kiln that we put castable refractory into and fiber wool insulation around the outside of it and it'll get that glass hotter than any electric furnace on site can handle. 27 or 2800 Fahrenheit. It's like a whole nother game when, when the glass gets up to this temperature it flows like water. So what's going on is we've got these two positive images that were 3D printed and we're going to sand cast them. So they're in here and we'll just pack the sand around them and make a reservoir and see what happens. To me this is about showing what the Starport is capable of supporting, you know, because I'm essentially offering to put out a really amazing shop setup and organize volunteers to help you see your ideas come to fruition and all that is really needed to fund all of this as well as our overall goals of the project is your participation in the sacred economy. To make a starship in every garage on our coins, we use almost half of the letters of the alphabet already. So it's not that much of a stretch to finish it out and, and uh, have one of our main outputs for this projection be uh, the alphabet. When's the last time somebody said, hey, here's a milli of every letter of the alphabet. Same size, all matched up, ready to go. What would you like to say?
are is just like, you watch that footage, if you're a glass blower, and even if you're not, I feel like you gotta just be like, whoa, that looks hard. <laughs> like, that's what I get out of the R. Like, and watching us work, like, we were a really well running team. I mean, that was my third attempt at the R because everything had gone wrong every time we tried to do the R because it kept getting too big and then it was like not handleable. You know, and so we'd kind of like, that night we'd kind of stacked the deck. We didn't have Maddie, but we had like, we had Matt Dubois and Nick Ashman, and they're both accomplished soft glass blowers with uh, deep skills. They've dealt with that kind of stuff before, and you can see it in the footage where, you know, it drops on the ground and there's no one's even like talking to each other. It just like, I looked up, Nick automatically started torching the end, which is what his job was. He's the torch guy. Matt walked up, whispered in my ear, he was getting a body wrap. I was like, oh yeah, good idea. And I got the thing hot, we convened at the piece, stuck it together. And these are the things that happen when you work with an experienced team. You know, and part of the beauty of the project is that I work with anyone who wants to come around and be around. And then I take my pick of, you know, who's the best qualified for the project at hand. <laughs> So I use the right people for the job, but we're literally training Starship personnel and then sending them out into the world. So when I go out and I travel, there's people that have that Starship ethos and have worked with me before. And so I have this volunteer team. And that's really like what the Starship ethos is all about, is like this project is designed for people to be able to have those like glorious moments of helping their community and being a part of something bigger than themselves. These millies are making you insane. Arr. Marini is an ancient glass technique. You're using like cross-sectional patterns of tubing or rods to create images. So if you can imagine like, just take a number two pencil and if you were to cut that thing in half and look at it on its end, it's got a pattern. There's a dark graphite surrounded by wood and like a, you know, a, an octagon or whatever there. And that's kind of how it is with glass. You know, you build up a pattern in layers along a rod and then you might stretch it down or pull it into something smaller and skinnier and then chop it up and you'll end up with kind of these tiles to use as discrete objects as Marcel does with, with his coins or as uh, parts of a larger piece. Millie's has kind of become, you know, a colloquial or slang term for, for what these guys are doing in Boro. It comes from Millefiori, which is the, the Italian thousand flowers technique. But, um, you know, it's, it's Marini, it's all Marini. Somebody a thousand years ago came into Marcel's shop, they'd probably be able to rock it. You know, they might be a little uh, 
taken aback by electricity, you know, but the furnace is hot, you know, the glass is hot, the tools are the same. And what's really cool to see about what Marcel's doing is just, you know, how much innovation can you do over 3,000 years? You know, what hasn't already been done? And, you know, he's really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with borosilicate glass, you know, taking it to a whole nother level. That, that's pretty wonderful and amazing to be a part of. Yes. Growing up in Oregon, trying to get people to be conscious, to realize what they want out of life, like what is the meaning in life? Is it, you know, friends and, and fellowship and community and, yeah, you, know, you look at Saturday Market, you look at the Country Fair, you look at Ken Kesey, you know what I mean? Just be conscious, be kind, questioning reality. And, you know, what we're doing with the sacred economy is I think trying to maybe make it better than the people before us or even just to have some fun along the way doing it, you know, really. I never even really counted, it was just like, keep going, there's going to be way more people. Every day of the year, we're trying to feed the family, make the pieces, pay the bills, feed the family, make the pieces, you know, pay the bills, you know what I mean? And to get everybody to immerse as a group onto your property and make stuff is a cool thing. And it was like, let's just get together and throw the proverbial paint cans at the canvas. Marcel's crazy as I am. He wants to just invite the world to his house and let them play with all his art supplies. New artists are constantly coming in and out of here, and the people that actually stay here are, are here often are learning so much, you know, just because you'd have to go out and fly all over the country to see these people work, you know, and, and it's a pretty amazing opportunity that anybody, seeing so many people with so many different skill sets sitting in one area, man, it's gonna be really fun watching this week what happens, and let alone the rest of this year, you know, is gonna be pretty amazing. I'm just a, a guy who comes in and docks every once in a while, you know what I mean? And willing to help out. Like Marcel, my buddy, he's got a vision, and I'm like, cool, you know? Like, I love it, love your vision. I'm all about supporting community, and it needs a community to make it work.
There goes the fucking neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> here. Right, you, might, you might tell me what's going on right here. I think we're here and we parked the RV. Tons of glass to be made. <laughs> on tour. It's been an experience because each project we've done has been different. So now it's like we're trying to make economy. We're trying to make money, you know? We want to make some mellies and put conscious sayings on them and they get people to buy them. And if other people are going to accept them, then it becomes like a little waterfall of the economy. And Melly always holds its value anyway. And it's being sold at a very cheap rate by Melly standards. Some of them are more, some of them are less, but you're getting pretty good bang for your buck. The amount of time it took to like create the Mellies, it took six months for us to make the alphabet. We just want people to realize that there's ultimately a trade and it becomes like a primal thing. So the biggest difference between a dollar or any fiat currency and the art unit is that the dollar is a promise to pay or an IOU. So it's essentially a debt. Whereas the art unit is a piece of artwork that has craftsmanship, material, labor, and community love involved in creating it. They are an intrinsic value currency, so the pieces that you use for trade are actually worth their face value or more as an art object. So it's more like holding a piece of gold and less like holding a promise to pay or an IOU. I got it right away. When he explained everything to me, I got it right away. It's really simple. We trade glass for glass. You know, these just have a declared value. How much of a shit show has this been for you for the past year and a half? A shit show? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say shit show. I would say um, a circus. <laughs> It's, it's been so much fun. It really has. Um, yeah. Interesting circus. These are my monkeys. All aboard! Come on! <laughs> Every day is a new adventure. We've had really good times and awesome people coming through and it takes more than one person to drive a starship though, but he definitely steers it. Hold on, boys! Process is a big part of glass working, and Marcel, process is almost as important, I think, as the final product. If you understand anything about lamp working borosilicate glass, and then you watch his process, you realize that he is doing revolutionary things with the medium. You know, plenty of people have boro furnaces, and they're pulling tubing, and you know, they're making rods and that sort of thing, but Marcel is just above and beyond all that. You know, he's out there in the stars, and you know, we're down here riding bikes. The energy and the technology that he applies to making the coins are quite remarkable. And remarkable enough so that dedicated glassmakers want to be there, expanding the, 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 the glass frontier. Oh, anytime Draco is lit and fired up, it's a rush. Yes. We're breaking our own records time after time of the largest borosilicate millipole. It's amazing. Nobody else in the world is doing this.
to bring it back to what is the Starship and what is our output like, we have, through our group activity, which has been supported by the industry and all of the people that come through here and work, we have created a situation where we can create this new technique for making Millie. So now I'm going to the DFO and I'm showing people a brand new, extremely valuable Millie technique and just like explaining it to anyone who takes the time to ask how it's working. Yes. This is the pinnacle of our technique so far. You guys are about to ball the fuck out on this stuff. This is just a, an output of the project that people are being gifted with. People are always like, why the hell are you guys doing this? Are you wasting your time? Is it fun? You know, of course it's fun. We're doing something nobody's done a lot. You know, if there's other people besides us doing it, I would like to meet them, you know? It's because they're probably as crazy as we are. It's like bugs going to the zapper. It's like, bzz, bzz. like you see the flame, Draco lights up. You're like, you know, the whole day is like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna be so hot and tired and are we really gonna make money? But like when you do it, it's like, coming to the top of the hill with your bike, seeing your little friend, and you skid out, and you're like, hey, what's up, Tommy? You know, nothing, bro. Hey, let's go down here and pop some wheelies and jump over that picnic table or butt, you know? Because that's what it b turns into, is like just a bunch of group of friends having a good time doing something that we love. I believe that we are multiplying value. We have an amplitude of resources here at the shop. We're much more capable of creating a fine art object with the high level equipment that's available here. And we've developed new techniques for the industry and pushed out some, some awesome work. And I'm proud of that. Here in Detroit, you know, I'm just hoping to explain about our economic system and the opportunity that we have to participate in an alternative to the petrodollar. You know, it's been a really awesome uh, experience so far because I've been able to like distill down the explanation fairly clearly so that uh, people are get grasping it and being like, oh, that's great. I like that idea. I'd like to participate. At this point, we're like, look, Here's all the stuff we've done. We've been working on this for six months. And when you see the results of the lifestyles, when it really starts to like make more sense. We were looking for a statement and after like discussing with a variety of the artists here, the statement we chose was, gift is the new bling. You know, kind of a good statement revolving around, you know, why we're all here, you know. People that are putting this on could be taking all this effort and buying themselves a boat and having uh, camping trips on the lake, but instead they're taking that effort and they're putting it into this class event that's going to put arts in schools. The effort that goes into it is for the positive good and it's like we're going to raise like 50 to 100 grand for the arts programs in Detroit.
about to go down, so it's about to happen in the wee hours. It's gonna get hot. It's gonna get real sweaty. Here we are finishing it, so we're gonna make it happen. So everybody's left for the after party. It's pushing 11 o'clock maybe. There's a few ballers still here. Banjo and Marcel's crews primarily. And your humble storyteller. something along the lines of amplified compassion equals reduced fear, but it's not smooth enough. What's the word you're trying to really convey? We want to reduce fear. Amplify compassion to eliminate fear. Amplify compassion. So pretty much be kind, don't bully people is what you're saying in an eclectic way. Amplify compassion to eliminate fear. Well, in the early 90s, during the Great Recession of that time, I saw that there was a need for more money in the community. So it made sense that if we were going to have enough money in our community, we would have to print it ourselves. At the outset in Ithaca, I drafted some prototype designs for local currency and then started to wave them at people black and white copies and uh, said, this is gonna be money. We'll trade it with each other, sign up here. To their credit, the first dozens in line agreed to accept this money for part or full payment for their goods or services. And um, quickly, hundreds of people joined in. It got bigger and bigger and bigger with ultimately 500 businesses, thousands of individuals, and millions of dollars value of this money transacted. It appealed to other people because it stimulated a sense of community. And that sense of community, I think, is a contribution that local currency made in Ithaca even greater than the millions of dollars of worth of this money transacted. The sense that we in our city are surrounded by people we can rely on and trust rather than random people scrambling for scarce dollars. That feeling of being able to trust each other, that's a powerful contribution to a genuine and human economy. Let's hear it! 
go over to the HIS Glassworks booth in the corner and check out your chance to be involved in Project 33. Find Marcel or Maddie White and they're going to show you how to cold work the coins that came from the Marini pool that happened here last night. And that's happening over at the HIS Glassworks booth right now. These are the ones that were made here yep. recently. I love the idea of finding a piece that you wanted and knowing that the artist accepts this as a currency and then going back and getting the, the coin from Marcel and using that. And I do see there being a, a, a very bright future. And, and who knows, maybe the coins will increase in value. That's a very big possibility. Seeing the Millie slabs he's pulling down of that size are just so like inspiring that I had to have one. These are money. Yeah. This is better than money. This is worth more than money to me. Oh, so yeah, me too. I accept if you wanted to come buy one of you know Lacey's pieces, we would accept this currency. All right, sweet. Or you know any of the Walton people that we represent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to be on board. Oh yeah, that's. I'm real excited to be on board. Yeah. I favor experimentation, and through the experimentation, we have progress. So this money, I think, will be readily accepted by an ever-expanding variety of people, merchants, individuals, businesses, and even the government, ultimately. If it is diligently and systematically networked, Overall, the way the project has been working is it's never really been starved for resources so much as we've been like unable to convert all the resources that we have at their like peak efficiency. You know, like if every person that I had caused to want to contribute to the project had been like perfectly followed up with by a top-notch public relations team, then, I mean, we could have already done millions and millions of dollars of commerce, you know, but it's an organic, growing process. As much as it's, like, an awesome thing to be like, I'm gonna just kill this and it's gonna be great, it's, like, really being prepared to, like, see that through and not doubt it at all and, like, do what has to be done to, like, make it into reality is a strong challenge, you know? How many people are there? Four, six, seven, eight. The reality is that the opportunity to be at the Starship is based on working. We need to like wake up, have breakfast together, and have a plan, and, and then execute the plan all day, and, and then have dinner, and do it again the next day. There are no passengers on a Starship. My mentors taught me hardcore work ethics and it, they showed me that you gotta work for what you want. Yeah, definitely go hard. How many uh, coins have you guys processed here in the last three days? Um, probably around 300 or so, I'd say. Definitely been grinding our asses off doing some, you know, 16 hour days it seems like, so. Since you're not like being paid to be here, what's the reward? You know, be bigger than myself. I can't do all this by myself, and I know that from previous experience. So seeing somebody else going this hard and actually putting the dedication in to get the equipment, to, to get people to come together is shit. That's what I want to live for. I mean, look at society. It's kind of crazy right now. With our president and everything, it's kind of the time to be a community. I see this being something that could actually have a message, that there are alternatives out there to this culture and this, this way of life that I've been living where I see this going is uniting more people together to actually create creative change.
right. I'm doing two coins here. The first one's going to be Purge the Fear and then uh, Manifest the Rainbow Prophecy. So we're going to get our torch lit up and uh, off to the races here shortly. Uh, I'm working with Maddie White and the kid. Looking forward to, uh, to crushing it out. When do you guys plan on releasing the movie? Dan question. <laughs> yeah, Dan, when's the one step at a time, kid? It's not like pulling a fucking letter out of a kiln. Oh! <laughs> love to localize an economy with something like Project 33's art units. The system that we're currently operating in financially is broken on a lot of levels. One of the ways you can interact with our current financial system and run into nothing but problems is be in the cannabis business. I basically can't use it, you know. So I'm almost forced into operating in a different way anyway. Any chance to participate in an alternative is very interesting. It's only kooky and whacked out if you think that Marcel is planning to replace the, the currency overnight with art units, and I don't see that. Um, it's just a matter of, I guess, enough other services being available to me as an art unit acceptor. You know, it's almost like being a Bitcoin acceptor, and what can I buy with this? From the perspective of having a worldwide impact, what are you going to do? You got to start somewhere. Taking the money from a system that's on one side completely non-functional for most of us and slowly moving it over to another side where it could be more functional is a great plan. This is a possible way to do something like that, especially on a local level for now. The challenge the project faces is getting people to take the next step beyond paying attention and understanding the situation to actually take action. To go beyond collecting a coin and purchase coins and see who you can convince to accept them for goods and services. Like that's the actual front lines of the project. The amount of financial movement that could happen is tremendous. This is the opportunity that we've been waiting our entire lives for. Not the coins or the project, but saying, hey, you know what? Aircraft carriers and fucking ICBMs aren't really doing it for us. What else is there? Yeah! Woo! Thank you all. All right, manifest the rainbow uh, prophecy. Yeah. Woo! Our children have a front row seat to the poor choices that we made creating a catastrophic problem. Like, they are going to be the ones to inherit crops that don't grow and water they can't drink. And 
you know, like we didn't even barely taste that and we didn't care. And I say we, like, I mean, I may be counterculture, I may be fringe, but I'm 40 years old, <laughs> you know? Like that means that my peer group has done this. You know, we are, we are currently giving consent to some really fucked up shit. And until everyone like really owns that, like how are you supposed to take responsibility and figure out a way to change uh, the situation that we're in if you think it's all somebody else's problem? Do you see it as like a responsibility? I mean, does an artist have a responsibility to give back in some way? I'm not saying that every artist owes but I'm saying that if you benefit or when you, when you are an influencer, then you're responsible for the influence that you have. When I think about art, you know, I think about a platform for discussing like the course of humanity and social standards and everything is on the table. Like literally everything is on the table within the scope of art. And so, and that's why I believe there's responsibility for the art that you choose to put out. I mean, it pretty much comes back to the rainbow prophecy. There will come a time when the water is poison, the food isn't good to eat, and the buffalo are gone. And then the tribes, the children of the earth, will come together as one tribe and heal the planet. And that's what we're gonna see happen. It's gonna be as simple as that. Well, so it was really crazy last year. I was just online looking at things and it was on my birthday. I turned 33 and I came across Project 33. So I thought that I should look into this. This is an intriguing art idea that I've never considered. Um, and as I did some research, I thought it fit the kind of idea that I was looking for with artists that I could help their ideas come to fruition and they could help heal the earth with new ideas and honestly, the uh, art unit project is the newest, most innovative um, art project that I've come across. So I'm doing a nonprofit tree planting project and collaborating with the glass community for the first time to make an art unit. Well, so I've been doing tree planting for over 10 years. Ever since I was in college, I've been donating a portion of all sales I've made to tree planting globally. And I found a nonprofit Trees Water People out of Fort Collins, Colorado, that just happened to really tie in with a lot of my core values. Last year, this week, we delivered 20,000 trees to Pine Ridge Reservation. Trees Water People's going back to South Dakota to continue planting another 30,000 trees. So the cool thing about this art unit we're going to make is a um, hundred of the coins we make are going dedicated directly to the South Dakota Pine Ridge Reservation tree planting project. Honestly, if the trees weren't here, I mean, we wouldn't be here. This project's not about making money. This project's about living. Art Seeds Dreams is a very accurate phrase for what we're trying to accomplish here. On a direct level, it, it means what it says, art is seeding our dreams of the tree planting. I'm really happy to be part of this reforestation. The earth's asking for help. Without repairing her and helping her, everybody's gonna lose their way and there'll be no future. So this is really important. I think this is a great way to raise extra capital because everybody likes to collect art. Other people could also use the same idea of making a coin to have the realities come true if they were to participate. Um, they just kind of have to have faith in it. With my Million Tree Planting Project, I'm supporting a group of people that's putting it directly into the earth. They're saving the earth in my eyes. In Lakota, we say, wow, it's easy bringing the green spirits back. 
we do this, we'll be protecting her. Nobody thinks it's possible to go, hey, I'm making art units, we're going to bring down the entire banking system. You know what I'm saying? Is yeah, but nobody thought it was possible, like, 20 years ago, I was setting up to make 20, 30, 50, 100,000 dollar bongs. That was my vision. I knew that was going to happen. We had to take steps to make that happen. We had to build the collector base. We had to do all this stuff. You know, now that's happened, you know? So 20 years ago, no one would have accepted the reality that we live in today. And that's my challenge to this community. It's like, you know, it does sound crazy to say that that's even a possibility, but with hard work and determination, like the fun along the way of even getting a fraction of the way there, is tremendous. I was starting this idea, this color manufacturing, right? I had so many people, same thing, like, Abe's fucking crazy. I don't know what the hell he thinks he's doing. And Marcel was one of the guys who was always like, dude, do it, bro. We need someone like you in the industry. And so, you know, he was one of my biggest fans. Yeah, of course I want to see this succeed. I think that's something that could teach people, you know, in the marketplace that stuff like this is possible. I think if anybody can do it, he can. I think if you just heard anybody else pitch it, it'd just be like beers around a campfire and you'd all agree it sounds great and then you move on to whatever the next discussion is, right? I mean, he, he, he came up with the idea, he presented it to people, he got people to help, he got it to the next stage, he's pushed it into the mainstream now and uh, I, don't, I don't know if just anybody could have done that. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, what it takes to even just do what's happening here at the Starship is a pretty crazy feat when you think about it. So if I can accept these units, that helps with Marcel's dream. Helps with my dream because, you know, I'm getting my work out there as well. I mean, everybody wins. The only thing I really want is success for him, so that's why my criticism comes in. But, you know, the one thing that struck me about watching the progression of the coins is all the different sayings he puts on the coins. I love the positive messages, they're mantras. And so if you're gonna like repeat positive sayings over and over again, it spreads energy that needs to be spread in today's world. One of the things that we need in our world is more uh, community and a sense of togetherness and a common purpose and glass blowers can do that. You know, I'm happy to support uh, Marcel and his career. You know, they're good people and that, that means a lot to me. And Marshall has integrity, he really does, so that, that's everything. Probably just like most people, you know, I heard about it and what he's doing, I'm like, man, what the hell is he talking about? So I went down there and uh, checked him out and saw what was really going on and I was like, okay, this guy is really practicing what he preaches and this guy is really leading by example and this guy's really doing it he's the real deal so instead of waiting around for the government to give us enough money we create our own power 
our own financial and trading power. And we, we don't wait for a majority to approve of it, as in Ithaca, as elsewhere, as anywhere. Begin with the people ready to begin. It's his life work. I mean, it's his, you know, his, his passion to create good in this world, to, you know, leave something for everyone that's worth something. All right, what do we got? You guys ready for this? It's to teach everyone how to seek positive change, to encourage it, for it to ripple out. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, boys, we got work. 